Hello and welcome to another video tutorial by Easy Academy. In this video, we're going to be covering how we can figure out the number of brokers we need for our Apache Kafka cluster. This is a question that is always on the mind of someone that is getting started. So if you are a beginner to Apache Kafka, you may have this question in your mind. So this video is going to, is going to address that. This was a concern or a question that I had in my mind as well when I just got started. So I eventually figured out how to set up the Kafka cluster, you know, setting up Zookeeper, setting up the other components. But sometimes people might wonder, how many brokers do I need? Do I need three brokers? Do I need five brokers? Do I need seven? Do I need 30? But how many do you need? Typically, you need an odd number but the exact number that you need is something that beginners might have problems figuring out. So this video is gonna address that. And this was one of the concerns that I had when I first started in the beginning to learn Apache Kafka. So I just wanna show you some of the strategies that are behind the reasoning when you're figuring out your cluster sizing. Now, in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the factors that influence the number of brokers you need for your cluster. And then we're gonna figure out how you can calculate these um, different uh, figures and, and, and constraints. Once we do that, we're gonna talk about some of the tools that are available to simplify this process for you to figure out, figure out how many brokers you need for your cluster. If you're new to my channel, I would like to invite you at this time to subscribe. This is very important because as I release new videos and re release new content, you will be the first to find out when this content is made available. So if you subscribe to my channel, if you also follow me on some of the social media platforms that are listed here, you would be the first to know when I have content available. So I have a YouTube channel, Easy Academy. You can also follow me on Twitter and GitHub, and you can check out my website as well for some of the content that I have to share on that website. Now, Apache Kafka is an open source data platform I have a course on massive data processing using open source software. So the link to that course will be made available in the description section of this video. So if you're interested in this, you can check out my course on Udemy and give me some feedback once you've checked out the content. So I strongly recommend that if you are in, in, into using open source platforms to process and store data, that course is gonna explain a lot. So feel free to check it out and let me know. Back to the topic of today's video, we're going to be figuring out the cluster size. So what are some of the things that go into figuring out the cluster size once you've decided to use Apache Kafka as your uh, platform? Well, let's consider some of those factors. One of the first factors would be the ingress throughput, meaning the amount of data that is coming into the cluster. And then the second one is going to be the retention policy. So I'm going to take a, a brief moment to explain these two concepts. The ingress throughput into the broker, this is the rate at which data is coming into the cluster, into the brokers. Um, and then if you want an analogy, let's say we have a warehouse where we need to store some materials. Now the, the ingress throughput will represent how many, let's say, packages are arriving at this warehouse at a particular time. So if we have maybe 10,000 packages that are coming in, the storage needed would also depend on the size of each package. So if you have small packages, you may need a smaller space. If you have larger packages, you will need larger larger space to store these 10,000 packages. So that is the first uh, criteria or the first uh, factor that affects the size of the cluster you need. So ingress throughput means how much data is coming into the cluster per unit time. This could be measured in seconds, it could be measured in minutes, hours, or days. So that is the first factor you need to consider. The second factor you need to consider is the retention policy. So this has to do with how long you need to keep the data in your cluster. So if you have 10,000 packages arriving in a day, and you, need, and, you, and you need to keep these packages for three days, that means you will need, you will need to have enough, enough space to store 10,000 times three. If you need to keep them for five days, that means you need to have enough space to store 5,000 packages. So as you can see, the same thing applies to the Kafka brokers. The 
storage capacity that you need for your cluster is dependent on how many messages are coming in, the size of each message, and also the duration in which you plan to keep these messages inside the cluster. So there are some other factors that may influence the cluster size, but these two factors are the main ones I would like you to, to focus on. So as you're thinking about your cluster size, think about the size of the message, the average average rate at which messages are arriving into the cluster, and then also how long you're planning to keep the messages in the cluster. Now remember Kafka has something called replication factor. So this is how many times you're creating duplicate copies of the message. So if you have a replication factor of one, this means that no other copy of the messages will be created. But if you have a factor of three, this means that you will have to create three copies of this message um, for each particular message that you have. So you also have to consider this factor as well. So the replication factor, which has to do with um, the number of copies you are keeping for each, mes each, mes each, me uh, each message, the retention policy, which is the, dura the duration in which you plan to keep the message, and also how many, how many messages are coming in per unit time. All these factors have to be considered as you are planning to design your cluster sizing. Now, the next thing I want to move on to is how do we do this calculation? So we can sit down and do it manually, which means we're going to sit down and assess all the different topics in the cluster. We figure out how long we plan to keep the data, the retention policy of each of those topics in the cluster, and also the number of replication factor. So once we do this, this can give us a rough estimate of the capacity, the storage capacity that we need. And then we can now distribute this across the different um, machines that are being used to set up the cluster. And that will help us to figure out how many brokers you need. So as you can see, if we have, if each, uh, each broker is able to store maybe one terabyte of data based on the retention factor, based on the ingress throughput, based on the replication factor, then that means that if you need to store five terabytes of data, at, at any given time, then you also have to need to set up five brokers to support this because each one can support one terabyte. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is it is not just a matter of storing the, the, the data. You also have to plan for future growth of your cluster. So if you uh, if you have the need to expand your cluster size from time to time, then you have to plan that in advance. So this is relevant if you are managing your cluster yourself. So you have to plan for the growth rate of your cluster, cluster depending on how many topics you plan to add and how much more data you plan to bring in and if you want to change the duration at which you uh, choose to persist the data. Now, this might not be relevant um, in the future because we are coming up with something called Kafka tiered storage. Uh, keep 405 which is something that the community is actively working on once that is in place where the storage and the compute of Apache Kafka will be decoupled then this would kind of minimize the amount of storage we need physically on the brokers to support the data storage but calculating it manually would involve you figuring out the capacity of each broker and then depending on the retention policy, depending on the ingress rate, depending on the, rep on the replication factor, that would affect how many brokers you need for that cluster, depending on how much each broker is able to store. Then we also have another uh, tool or application that uh, Confluent created called eventsizer.io. So if you visit this website, this website actually walks you through how to do the cluster sizing um, right away. So I'm going to go ahead and head out to this website. Now on the website, you have four different modes in which you can choose. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take a look at the simple mode. If we take a look at the simple mode, you have the first line here is talking about how you can. It's talking about the throughput in megabytes. So let's say we have uh, 10 megabytes. A second and then they find out this is how many um, how much data like how many different components will be pulling data out of the cluster out of the brokers so I typically put three for that 
the retention we need to keep this for seven days so you can see if you're having 10 megabytes coming in per day um, with a retention policy of seven then we need to have enough storage for 18 terabytes now let me change this today and see what happens so you see including replication as i change the number the rate at which data is coming into the cluster this this number actually changed so these factors also affect the main factor is the ingress through, uh, throughput and the retention policy so this actually affects the total sizing you need now if you're doing this on-prem on bare metal you have the ability to pick the storage that you need but let's say we're doing this in in um, on azure microsoft azure it would show you the machine types you need and then you can use this to figure out the different uh, machines you need for the some of the other components so for zookeeper for kafka connect for REST proxy for schema registry and all the other components for the cluster ecosystem you can see the different uh, machines that you need but for now i'm going to focus on just just the broker so the broker uh, Confluent recommends you use this particular machine type. So if you go to the Azure website where you have the different machine architectures that explains the CPU and the memory that is available on this machine, you should be able to see exactly how many CPUs are available there. And then also you can take a look at the reference architecture to see what is recommended in terms of the instant types and how many you need for that setup. But this tool here really simplifies and makes it easy for you to figure out exactly how many machines you need. So here we have the machine uh, types and if we go ahead and calculate the cluster size, it gives us a detailed result of we need four brokers, we need five zookeeper nodes, we need this number of the other components that we need for the cluster. But the one that I really wanted to focus on is the broker count. So as you can see, this tool really takes out the guessing game if you don't really have a lot of experience and you want to just figure out quickly how many brokers you need, you can come to this tool and then you can use all the different calculation, calculations here to figure out exactly what you need to figure out the um, cluster size. So that's it for now. Now I'm coming back to the content of today we figured out how to do the calculation manually. We also figured out how to use the event sizer tool to calculate the number of brokers that we need. And that's pretty much everything you need to figure it out. So that's all for this particular content. If you like this content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to share the video with others if you think this content will be, uh, will be beneficial for them. And then uh, I also have a course that talks about how to use massive data, um, use uh, open source software to process massive data. And then um, if you like the course, please feel free to sign up and then also give me the feedback once you've checked it out. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.